And so, as you guys can see here, I have my car ramp set here. I have my block here. And what we're going to do is see if the different heights that we have this car ramp affect the force that the car applies. All right, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna test each level three times. That way we can get an accurate reading of whether or not force is actually playing a role. So the first uh, height that I'm gonna set the car ramp on is one, level one. All right, so we have the car on level one. I really, don't even have to have the uh, the Crayola box in front of it to level the block out. And what we're going to end up doing is I'm going to use my ruler to measure the distance of each one of them. And so first, I pull the car back. I set the block right there on the edge. And I let the car go. All right. We can see that that block from that first hit, travel the distance of about, I'm gonna say about 12 inches, but I wanna make sure it's accurate. So remember, to be an accurate scientist, you always have to repeat at least three times. That way you can make sure that the data is accurate and it wasn't just an outlier. And so we'll do a couple more times. Put the block right there. Let that car back. This is still level one. Boom. All right. So this time it went about 13 inches. So it's still pretty close to the same amount of force. We'll do it one more time at level one to make sure it's accurate. And again, about 13 inches. So that force is pretty accurate. Uh, and so on my paper, I would write uh, for height one, trial one, one was 12 inches. Trial two was 13 inches. And trial three was 13 inches. That way I don't forget. And that was at height one. Now we're gonna raise it up to height five. So when we measure that on trial one, twenty four, twenty four plus six, we get thirty inches for trial one when it's at a level five. So thirty inches. Now let's do it again. Remember, we have to do each one of them three times so that we can make sure that our data is accurate. Oh, and as you can see, that's why you do it three times because do you guys think that this here going 11 inches, do you guys think that's accurate data? No, it's not, but we put it in anyway because uh, we can tell when we do this third one that that is going to be an outlier, which means that that data is not right. That's why you always want to do a trial at least three times because it takes out the room for error. The more times you do it, the more you take out the room for error. Twelve. Twenty-four. Thirty-six. All right. So that trial three went thirty-six inches. So that tells you two out of the three trials at height five were in the thirty. And so that pretty much tells you that that second trial with eleven inches, something went wrong. All right. And what probably happened was 
that our steel ball here or our steel cube probably caught too much friction on that Crayola box when it came down. And I have to use that Crayola box as a stabilizer to kind of hold it in place. All right, go up to level 10. Let's double it. Let's go up to 10. <laughs> Fifty-two inches. Fifty-two inches. All right. So the second tryout was the same. Fifty-two inches. Fifty-two inches. <laughs> Yeah, I would really have fun with this. If, if it wasn't for COVID, I'd probably have like four of these or five stations set up where y'all could actually do it around the room yourself. That'd be a lot more fun. And I actually do have a lab coach in here. Perhaps I should put one on. <laughs> The science guy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh, all right. So we have. Oh no, I'm cooler than being not a science guy. I'm way cooler. All right. So our last test to see if the height from which a car is released on a ramp affects the force it has. actually went 56 inches, 56 inches. Yeah, it's still on high team. So our initial question was, does the height from which a car is released affect its force? What would y'all's answer be? Yes, it does. Why? Good. And so 
I put it, yes it does, because the higher the height the car was released from, the farther it knocked the block. All right? And we can see that from proof. Now, in this experiment, what was our independent variable? Good job. The thing that we continued to change was the height of the ramp. And so the height of the ramp is the independent variable. And then what was our independent variable? Good. How far are the distance that the block traveled? After being hit by the car. And it's kind of like you can think of it as a car on the street. Uh, when we think about that, a car going five miles an hour would probably barely cause us to move. But if a car hit us going 20, 30 miles an hour, it's going to knock us in the air. All right? And so the same thing happened here. That car gained more speed coming down the ramp because gravity had more time to act on it. All right, what were some constants in our experiment? Yeah, the block. The block remained the same. What else? The car remained the same. And that's going to be important because we don't want a, a bigger car or a smaller car on each trial because then we wouldn't know if it was the height that was affecting it, the uh, distance that the block traveled, or the different car. So it was good that the car remained the same. So we said the car, the block. What about the surface of the table? The type of what? Yeah, yeah. The type of ramp was the same. What about the surface of the table? Did that stay the same? All right, so let's make sure we put the surface of the table. Because think about if this was carpet. Once, uh, on some other tests, if this was carpet and then some that was smooth like this table is here, then that carpet would cause more friction and so the cube probably wouldn't travel as far. So it's very important that the surface remain the same. It was a constant. All right, so we answered our questions with that. Let me stop the video.